It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Sally here. Today for this video, I'll be reacting to a video debate that I saw from Argentinian television where pretty much a far leftist actually had the balls to debate this sort of Cuban guy about the whole entire issue in his country and telling him that Cuba is not necessarily a dictatorship. So, without further hesitation, let's watch the video clip and of course I'll get my personal thoughts and reaction to all of it. ¿Es una dictadura la de Cuba, sí o no? Y justifica. No, no es un gobierno que tiene legitimidad de origen. Es un gobierno que este, tiene una constitución que se aprobó en el 2019, una participación de más del 80% de, de la población. Es un, un gobierno que además fue refrendado en unas elecciones en el 2018. Y además la historia, te digo rápidamente, la historia de Cuba, los 60 años de bloqueo, demuestran... Mira, es un bloqueo que impuso el país más no poderoso del mundo. No el bloqueo todavía. Decime, justificame por, por la, tu respuesta. Para vos no es una dictadura la de no, Cuba. Claro, es no, claro. Es, es un dictadura. país que tiene un gobierno con legitimidad de origen. Con le There has been like a few seconds so far. I could immediately tell just how awful this whole entire freaking debate really is. Because here you have a guy, a far leftist, debating a Cuban about his own personal lived experiences in that country. Now normally like a lot of leftist people say that we have to listen and believe the lived experiences of oppressed people and minorities while literally there's evidence of the oppression that's happening in Cuba since like the 1950s and the 60s, right? When they started to implement communism throughout the whole entire country and where people are suffering and cannot eat at all and why they, a lot of them actually come to the United States and Miami in particular to live their life without some sort of dictatorship. Many of these leftists actually, you know, advocate for listen and believe, but for this sort of case, it seems as though that he's not listening, he's not believing, and he just want to say that everything's America's fault and that apparently, like, the whole entire issue is that Cuba was actually voted for the government and therefore it's a legit government. The thing about it, though, although there was like a new constitution that was actually implemented back in 2019, the truth of the matter is that the Cuban people don't necessarily have some sort of option at all when it comes down to this issue. Because think about it, if you were to go against the government in Cuba, you would actually, you know, be in prison, be shot, just because you have some sort of dissenting opinion. And so I don't necessarily think that that election with the new constitution was actually, you know, legit because otherwise you get shot, you get killed, you get in prison for actually going against the Cuban government. So the Cuban people don't really have much choice when it comes down to the election. It's either the Communist Party or, you know, what I just said earlier. Ya me lo estás diciendo, es una dictadura. Exacto, es una dictadura. O sea, hay, Justificame hay... por qué es una dictadura para vos, Luis. Nunca ha habido elecciones. O sea, Fidel pro prometió elecciones en 1959. Las fuerzas eh, y los comandantes de Fidel Castro, que derrocaron a Batista, lo hicieron luchando por reinstaurar la constitución del 40 y quisiera elecciones. Fidel no reinstauró la constitución del 40 y no hizo elecciones hasta hoy. La comida en Cuba. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo organizabas la comida? ¿Cómo era un día típico tuyo en tu familia? A ver, contame cómo era el almuerzo, la cena, el desayuno, ¿cómo es? Eh, la compra de la mira, comida en Cuba. Yo nací en 1987, sí. previo a la caída del muro de Berlín y del campo socialista. Sí. En esa, esa década del 80 había habido cierto mediano confort, mantenido siempre, subvencionado por, por el CAME y toda la asociación de... de, de de la Unión Soviética, y en mi época, al no existir esa subvención, había un hambre y una necesidad tremenda. ¿Pero cómo era un almuerzo? Mi... ¿Cómo era, cómo era el chavo y con vos? Lo de... único que era? había era arroz y frijoles, arroz y frijoles. Eh, nosotros nos tuvimos que mudar más al campo para poder tener quizás alguna vianda, algún tubérculo. Pero explícame eso, a ver cerdo. qué era, levantarte en la mañana, ¿qué desayunaba? ¿Cómo era con tu familia? ¿Qué... Explícamelo, porque no, no, no sé cómo es. A veces había leche, a veces no había leche, eh, a veces cuando... Terminé, con, cuando pasé los siete años, ya no tenía derecho a tomar leche, ya no tenía cómo comprar leche. Whenever I hear these sort of stories about Cubans and Venezuelans sharing their stories about how hard it is to get food, it makes me really sad. It makes me sad because oftentimes, more than not, 
we Americans don't necessarily understand how good that we have it here. Now, throughout the whole entire COVID thing, I noticed that there were some people who were trying to compare, like, you know, the empty grocery stores that's in, like, Venezuela to what happened briefly for, like, United States because a lot of, like, a lot of supermarkets and whatever were very short in supply when it came down to the various uh, food items. Which is kind of disgusting to me because you cannot necessarily compare what you're going through to Venezuela, to Cuba, or elsewhere in like Latin America. It's like a whole different ball game. Because with the case of like Cuba, with the case of Venezuela, you cannot necessarily find any type of food items because they don't necessarily restock the food items. And so the people in those countries are starving to death. Starving. Meanwhile, although our stuff in the United States sometimes, you know, do not get restocked fastly because of the whole entire pandemic, there are still companies that are still producing the food and have supply and demand to actually produce the items that we actually need. Now, there's like a huge difference, of course, between a want and a need. A want, of course, is stuff like, you know, iPhones or whatever, and like a need is basically like the necessity like food and water everybody needs food and water not everybody needs a computer not everybody wants a self like there's a huge difference between a want and a need and so all the needs that a people have to have to have in like those countries unfortunately they do not have that kind of stuff in venezuela they don't have it in cuba and so to have something like something like simple like milk, for example, like he was saying in the video, it's kind of sad that they have to go to some sort of black market just to find milk. That is just crazy. And I cannot possibly think of living such conditions as I just heard right now in the video. Sí. No, obviamente sin sin impugnar la opinión de una persona que vivió en Cuba, hay un hecho que es que es innegable, digo, no lo digo yo, lo dice la UNESCO. En Cuba no hay desnutrición infantil, ¿no? Indudablemente problemas económicos clarísimos hay. Y sobre todo en la década del 90 durante el periodo especial, ¿no? Este, cae la Unión Soviética, Estados Unidos re, refuerza el bloqueo contra Cuba, la situación económica fue muy difícil. Pero hay un, hay un elemento destacable, digo, en Cuba no hay gente viviendo en la calle. En Cuba no hay niños... Pero, ¿Qué, ¿qué, ¿qué Cuba está el... viendo él? ¿Cómo? Perdón. En Cuba no hay gente pero, viviendo en la calle. Pero, eh, debajo de mi casa vivían dos personas mira, que se murieron de frío. Es... Perdón, perdón, perdón. No, no. A ver, ¿qué Cuba estaba hablando? Que pero, no hay desnutrición infantil. Bueno, ¿Tú has ido al campo vos, cubano? Vos podés, vos podés ¿Has decir, visto al vos campo decir, cubano? Pero, ¿Has visto lo quieras, a los niños cubanos? Las, ¿Me vas a decir a mí que no hay desnutrición de infantil? ¡Ja, la... <ríe> Oh man, the absolute goals of that whole Argentinian guy. Like, it's so stupid. Like, why would you, you know, try to contemplate against his own personal live experience when it comes down to Cuba and the whole entire situation with milk? How can you possibly say that there is like no malnutrition for children for milk? When literally this guy just told you that it's very hard to find food and that there are sometimes you could get milk, sometimes you can't. It's just so insane to me. Again, like I said earlier, these are like the same sort of people who basically lecture other people to listen and believe this whole entire experience is if they were oppressed or if they're a minority. Like imagine, for example, I was to live in like, you know, during segregation or whatever, and I talked to somebody who was like a black slave, right? Imagine if I told them that your experience was not that bad because obviously, you know, s slavery was not that bad. Like, the reaction for that kind of person would be like, you know, justifiably upset because you have not experienced slavery, and so therefore, that person have every right to be mad about your comment. Similarly, any type of person who just denies about the experiences of Cubans should also, you know, face some sort of confrontation from these sort of people because honestly, guys, to, you know, question somebody because of what's happening in Cuba is like the worst thing ever. Don't do that, man. Like, you know, they have their stories and their personal experiences, so 
it's not a good idea to do this sort of stuff. It really, really, really isn't. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.